Hey YouTube, Copper Sen here. Whenever I'm streaming, I always get asked, Copper, what's the best class in the game? And then I tell the person that any class is viable. And then for some reason, the next question always is, okay, but which one is the most viable? So here are 10 classes that are in a really good spot right now after the Ignition update. With the Knight of Cygnus remaster, all knights are in a really good spot right now. But there is one class that is easy to use, has easy notes, good damage, mobility and safety. And that of course is none other than the Dawn Warrior. This class is a great mobber, has big multiple AoE attacks that you can iterate between for easy mobbing. And of course with the changes to Erda's Shower you can get even better farming rates compared to before. This goes for basically every class. You only need one skill trial for your notes which is Cosmic Shower, Cosmic Burst and Solar Slash Lunar Divide. Making it super easy to buff up your skills. This class itself is very easy to play and when you're bossing you can make use of the many dashes and multiple invincibility frames to never worry about any boss attack really. You have your own bind as well well for easy bossing from the get-go. Currently Dawn Warriors kind of feel how it felt like to play Adele when she was first released. They're just in a really good spot at the moment. If you want to challenge yourself a bit more and want to farm Mesos, there is one class that has the potential to be the best Meso farmer in the game. The Shadow class has the unique passive ability to find 20% more Mesos from monsters than any other class, making it by default a highly popular class for farming, if you of course still farm. Shadowers are not that easy to fund though. They really start to shine when their Meso explosion skills start starts putting in the work, like one-shotting, two-shotting monsters, but even so, their main mobbing attack, hyper skills and additional fib job skill attacks like Shadow Assault and Slash Shadow Formation can help them farm very efficiently early on, which gets a lot better when you have even more funding. Bossing wise, they're no slouch either. With high base damage on their bossing skills and a smoke screen that reduces damage taken, they even have advanced dark side, allowing them to stay in dark side when attacking. Being in dark side dodges anything falling from the ceiling during boss fights, making things just so much easier. You can just face tank whatever, man. Having to use Meso Explosion as much as possible is a different playstyle, but very rewarding when you have enough funding. And of course, no video like this would be complete without showing off a Buccaneer. Great bossing, the potential for very lazy grinding where you just kinda jump around. This class has risen a lot in popularity after the Destiny update earlier this year, and rightfully so. Thanks to the Lord of the Deep scale, they can simply stand nearby enemies and watch them die. They want to get around the map quickly to deal with the monsters by simply touching them to death, and their kit is actually perfect for that. They can super jump to cover a lot of ground, have a 5th jump skill that can dash them around as well, and if you want even more mobility, you can always get the 5th job rope lift skill as well. Bug's notes are pretty simple and once you get enough damage to one shot with Lord of the Deep, that big dragon spinning around you, this class is literally a walk in the park to train. They also get additional bonus EXP by using the roll of the dice skill, granting them an additional 30% bonus EXP on top of your decent holy symbol and whatnot. Every pirate class gets this by the way. These classes just don't struggle man. Bossing wise they're no joke either. They get a passive critical boost against bosses, have multiple short invincibility frames and you can use your mobility to get out of a tricky situation. Besides that you're kinda just standing close to a boss so Lord of the Deep can go to work while you octopunch a boss to death. It's a fun and mobile playstyle that many maplers enjoy. Plus it looks like this class is gonna get buffed again in 6 months from now, so you got something to look forward to as well. If you prefer a ranged playstyle, both the Marksman and Bowmaster Explorer Archers are in very good spots right now. Both are rocking a lot of passive buffs, like to their IED, critical rate, critical damage, things like that. They have decent grinding, which gets even better with the Erda Fountain changes. And they can rip apart any boss monster with surprisingly more safety than most classes. The Marksman can summon an Arrow Illusion that works similar to Wind Arch's Crystal, luring in monsters so they attack that thing instead of you, so you get to free fire. Their bossing skill Snipe is very powerful, always crits and has a passive ignore defense bonus, which gets buffed up by their passives even more. And the Marksman grinding is amazing while split shoulders up and actually not bad when that skill is on cooldown. The Bowmaster is kinda in a similar position. With their blood arrows and illusion doubles they can withstand a lot more boss attacks than it would seem at first glance. With the ignition update their arrow turret lasts longer now making it easier and more lazy to grind with this class. If you iterate between your 5th job skills you should have no trouble grinding. Both classes are in a really good spot. They have easy notes, plenty of base damage and are just easy to play. The Marksman already was quite popular after the Destiny update, but the Bowmaster is gaining a lot of ground at the moment. Another class that got some very solid changes with the Ignition update is Luminous. If you want to, this class can be a super lazy mobber thanks to their reflection skill buffs. 
This class already was pretty solid, but now it's just almost straight up broken. It can clear a ton of monsters by simply looking left and right and spamming reflection. Luminous also got changes to his toggles, making them easier to use and buffs to some of his attacks. And of course, his fidget skills are absolutely amazing when it comes to mobbing. Luminous can also choose to either stay in light or dark mode. In practice, you want to be in equilibrium mode as much as possible, so you can use the Gate of Light skill and the buffed version of Conduit. This class excels at grind, but being able to stay in light and dark mode can really help those lazy grinders. This class really excels at grinding, but is actually also a surprisingly decent bosser. In the right hands, this class can dish out a lot of damage with their Ender bossing skill and fifth job skills like Baptism of Light and Liberation Orb. You have your own bind, of course, and a 30 second invincibility frame if you use Freud's Wisdom, which is a common fifth job skill for all hero classes. Literally, the only downside of this class is that grinding in third job kinda sucks. You know which class I haven't mentioned yet? Of course, best class Paladin. High base stats like Ignore Defense, check. Powerful debuffs and supportive skills, check. A ton of passive survivability so you can sleep during boss fights, check. Decent mobbing, check. The only thing this class doesn't have is super high damage, but that would be a bit unfair, don't you think? Paladins are easy to build up with simple notes, great vigil skills and easy grinding. They have a ton of survivability thanks to their passive shield and shareable 30 second invincibility frame. They can also buff up their final damage and debuff monsters to lower their defense. Thanks to all these skills, this class is very easy to play and a very forgiving bossing wheel that can easily bonk some monsters to death. Your burst might not be as impressive as some of the other classes, but you can stick to bosses a lot longer thanks to your insane survivability. The grinding is decent with a few short cooldown skills you can use like Heaven's Hammer and your Hammer Throws. And of course, Edda Shower is great for this class as well. Paladin is a low effort class that's in a really good spot right now. And of course, speaking of Explorer Warriors, the hero class is also in a really good spot. If you don't need the survivability of the Paladin, or Dark Knight, but want to go full damage, the hero class could be more up your alley. This powerful class can rip through any boss with their high damage skills It can be used even more often now after the ignition update. Heroes also have great mobility with their dash and they can send out long range attacks. Their mobbing got improved a lot with the Destiny update earlier this year. And while it isn't the most amazing mobber out there, it's definitely very solid right now. And of course your rates are buffed up even more by Aether Shower. Heroes do like it though when your account is a bit more build up with Legion and Link skills, as their base critical rate and ignore defense skills aren't the highest, but overall it's an amazing bosser who also has a short cooldown invincibility frame that cuts the screen, so you get style points for playing this class as well. There's one class though in the game that has been pretty dry on buffs, and that's not because they are a class Nexon seems to forget about, like Kaiser or Phantom. No, that's because the class already is just really good. Amazing mobbing, amazing bossing, amazing mobility, and an amazing amount of gauges, this class has it all. So far this class has been pretty consistent at being great, no matter which update is released. Their notes are a bit of work though, but besides that, this class is pretty easy to fund and play with relatively high base damage. You will need a good rotation for your skills though. This class is definitely for the people that want to keep their cooldowns in mind and figure out the best placement for their skills and summons. Hoyong has like a whole arsenal of summons that he can use, clones, butterflies, vortexes, ancient gods, you name it. Mobility wise he's also great, he can fly on the cloud and almost all of his skills have some form of displacement that you can use. And fun fact, in the current test client in Maple Story Korea, this class is getting buffed a bit. It hasn't been released yet in the live server, so who knows if everything will go through. But high chance that if you make a Hoyong right now, you're gonna be even stronger six months from now. The next class is a little bit controversial because it's one of the least popular classes, one of the least played classes. I guess that's why Nexon is buffing it like every other update. This class is very powerful right now as it received nothing but buffs and improvements over the year. But it's still an Ilium. A lot of Maplers don't really like the playstyle with his battery. But if this is a thing you might like, you'll notice that Ilium is a very powerful class. He has a gauge that needs to be managed and can unleash different skills in exchange for his meter. And once you start flying around, things go really bad for the monsters around you. Ilium's boost notes aren't too bad, he only needs two trios. He has a lot of skills to manage though, and it definitely is not an easy class if you easily lose track of your skills on your keyboard. If you want to challenge yourself and like the playstyle and aesthetics of this class, make sure to give it a spin. Ilium has gotten nothing but buffs and is in a really good spot right now. Alright, time for the ABC of Maple Story. I'm of course referring to, to Aaron Best Class. Eren already had high base damage, great mobility and easy survivability, but the recent updates made things even easier for this class. Their mobbing was made a lot easier now that you can use Beyond Blade without having to use Final Blow before it. You can still use the combo if you want to boost the damage of Beyond Blade, but if you can already one-shot with Beyond Blade itself, 
It's just a lot easier on the fingers right now. It's so much better. Aaron's Maha Domain also gives a two second invincibility frame now, adding even more safety to the class. Aaron itself is a bit more intense to play than, for example, Hero or Dawn Warrior because you have to use all those inputs manually to get the most damage. But it makes up for that with even better mobility and passive healing when you hit enemies. Aaron already was in a good spot thanks to his high base damage, survivability and mobility. And it's now even easier to play and has more safety too. It's in a really good spot right now. Those are actually already 11 classes. Also, I want to mention two more classes. Both Cadena and Mercedes have improved by a lot over the last 12 months. Cadena now has super stance on most of her skills, making it so much easier to boss with this class. And it already was very powerful. Mercedes has gotten the most improvements, I feel like. Bigger hitboxes, she can use her skills closer to the ground, more invincibility frames, and she got more damage as well. And it looks like she will be getting even more improvements in six months. Both classes are not very popular, I feel like, but definitely check them out if you're into that combo playstyle. And that's all for today. What do you think of my picks? You got any suggestions yourself? As always, let me know in the comments. And as always, many thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to Niels de Konik, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Oss, Terry Kim, Varys, Kaudi Mora, Wiley, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Safronix, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Knife Zoo, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Digby, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Menchaca, Ratius, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Afterlord underscore MS, Striker Elk, Tidal One Pun, Radical Jaws, Riser RU, Sir Tito, 655, Matthias Simerson, PC Game Life, The Passenger, Martin Panzik, Conor Cristalis, Ace Light, Mr. Anark, Ben Wolf, Max Bernhardt, Muka 1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Priscilla, Brennan Cam, Vague Botnet, Fek Victor Sundström, Simak Only, Rashid Alarudi, Gerlando Balavia, Gianfranco Calderon Canavero, Lucky Beats, Matinho Dev, Gummy Bullet, Lord Fazil, Spots D. Kaiser, Zunnen, That Archie Guy, Grogro, Grable Egg, and Louis Bento Brandao. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, and as always, happy mapling.